It's a big day today. We're doing Immigrant Stay and Succeed Nova Scotia. Huge stuff because all of these amazing people here are on track to get permanent residency and make Nova Scotia their home. Welcome. I know you want this. Permanent Residency of Canada. But you don't understand the complicated government websites and guides. This is why in this video, I'm bringing you along to my international student conference in Halifax. Oh, and don't worry, the Canadian Experience Class program is federal, which means you can apply it to whatever province you live in except for Quebec. All these people came to learn about how to get PR in Canada and apply for the CSC stream. Preet is here attending our event all the way from Toronto. Did you fly in specifically for this? Yeah, I came in yesterday. And I'm leaving tomorrow. So that's incredible, just for the event. Just to meet you and oh have a few God, questions. And I just First, I'll walk you through the main requirements and then my immigration lawyer will share a free tutorial. Let's do it. We have Canadian experience class. Three main circles, right? We have the presence in Canada. You need to have work experience that you gained inside the country. You cannot get a remote work and go back to India, China, work from there and apply for this stream. You need to be present inside the country. Then we have the 1,560 hours, which is the magic number for how many hours of paid work experience, Canadian work experience, you need to get in order to qualify. Another circle is we have tier 0, 1, 2, 3. If you're not familiar, it used to be NOC, uh, National Occupational Classification. This is how Canada grades your skill level. So there's high skill jobs, there's low skill jobs. These are high skill jobs. We'll talk about how to find out which job you have, what qualifies under tier 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, so some of you might be thinking, I probably can get 1,560 hours within less than one year. So do I need to stay in Canada, work here for one year? Or maybe I can get 50 hours a week and then get to this number faster before 52 weeks, right? Before, before one year. Can I do that? The answer is no. So you need to start working to accumulate the 1,560 hours and wait until one year in order to qualify because IRCC will not count anything beyond 30 hours a week. And that's when you can finally start the application procedure for permanent residency. But now you might have a question. I got a, a job, now I'm working full time and I'm on track to get my 1,560, right? 1,560 hours. Uh, but Max, you said that you need to work continuously for a year. Can I have a vacation? Well, you came here to Canada not to slave away, right? You're not slaves. You can have a paid vacation. So in your contract, you'd be allowed to have, usually it's a two week vacation that you can request from your employer, which will still be paid. So this will count towards PR application. Another big thing is documents. Documents you might need. We have quite a few requirements in terms of important documents you need to start collecting from day one because your CEC application begins the moment you start work or even at the job interview stage. You might ask me why, because you will need to get a job offer. And as you can tell, a job offer is specific because it has a little star. So we'll talk about what type of job offer you need to make sure you get from your employer. Then we have pay stubs. Pay stubs are important, you get them if you're paid and you should be paid legally, right? Not under the table. T4s, employment verification letter, record of employment and employment contract might be the same as job offer. So these can be interchangeable sometimes. So let's talk about them one by one. What do we have? Job offer, this is very big. Please pay attention to what I'm about to say. Uh, so your job offer has to include all of those things, your job title, your hours per week, your uh, pay per hour, and your duties. Why? Because IRCC, when assessing your job offer, right, the Department of Immigration, a visa officer, will compare those two. They will compare the job offer you have with the title, with the duties, with the pay, to their standards, their knock, or their tier. And they want to make sure that if you are a web designer, web developer, your duties include things appropriate to what you're supposed to be doing and not cleaning or wiping tables. If they see your job offers has some random stuff in it, duties that 
counteract what they have in their knock, it will disqualify you. And this job offer or even your knock that you're claiming might not be eligible for CEC, Canadian Experience Class. All right, I have a pro tip. Those of you who watch my YouTube channel know that I like those little tricky things to share with my audience, with so many of you amazing immigrants. Uh, what is that knock pro tip? So make sure that you compare the knock description, government knock description, to your job offer. And make sure these two match, right? So make sure what you see on knock matches your job offer. If it doesn't, you might want to talk to your employer. Let's talk about how you can actually compare that because it's a little tricky. There is three steps. Step number one, you're going to go on knock. So who uses Google here? Google, hi, my best friend Google. You go on Google, you type in knock, right? You want to type in uh, knock and then you want to go on this web page. It's going to look similar to this. And in this search bar, you're going to type in what you do. Let's say you do marketing, right? For marketing, you're going to check what jobs are most relevant to you, right? For what I have right now is I have a tier zero and a tier one jobs. Then I'm going to copy this number. I'm going to copy this number and I'm going to open another Google page. So I'm going to search knock and then paste the number that I copied in another Google tab, which will bring me to the official government website for knock or tier. And I will check the duties that this one, the government website has as compared to my job offer. I'm going to check my job offer, which will look similar to this duties, responsibilities. And I want to see that this one is somewhat similar to this one because a visa officer will do this when they check your job offer. Now we've come to the actual tutorial part and this is why I brought my immigration lawyer, Erica, to the scene because she's gonna dive right into it. Erica, please introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you so much, Max. So my name is Erica and I'm an immigration lawyer and I'm currently living in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I've worked with many, many people helping them achieve their dream of coming to Canada, whether it's through a work permit, study permit, or as we're going to be talking about today, becoming a permanent resident. Erica as a lawyer has the most perspective and experience to actually guide us through it. So let's dive into it, Erica. First of all, I just wanted to let you all know that the portal that we're going to be using right now is my authorized representative portal. So what that means is it's going to look a little bit different than your personal IRCC portal. Yeah, so you would go in GC key to make this application just to clear GC key, then scroll down to apply to Canada and then apply for express entry. Now let's do it. Okay, so the first question is a very important question. Which province or territory do you plan to live in? So obviously it's hard to decide because there are a lot of wonderful provinces in Canada and you can change your decision. It's, it's not set in stone, but this is important because when you select a province, it opens you up to being considered by that province for a certain provincial nominee program. So I won't get into the details of that because it's a very in-depth discussion, but let's just say it does open up some different opportunities if for some reason you aren't quite ready for express entry. But in this situation, we are assuming that you're qualified for express entry under the Canadian Experience class. So let's say you want to come to Canada and Max, do you have a preference of where? Uh, <laughs> yeah, many of our viewers are in Ontario, so let's do that. Okay, Ontario. So the language test that you can take if you want to take a test to show your skills in English, that would be IELTS or CELPIP. And for French, it's going to be the TEP test or the TCF test. And please do keep in mind that if you have previously taken a language test, your results are only valid for two years. So if you are applying for express entry and you have previous result, but you need to retake it, make sure that you take it before you submit your express entry profile. So okay. when did you take your test? Let's say 2023. Your favorite month. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say the 15th. <laughs> All right. So you got the highest. Yeah, well, Erica is filling it out. It's very important that you study up and um, make sure you get the highest scores you can because it's going to change the score 
for CUC. And that little difference in five to 10 points can really make or break your application. Okay, so here, if you also speak French, this is where you would add that. So let's say we don't have French because okay. most people wouldn't. Okay, so in the last three years, how many years of skilled work experience do you have in Canada? You can select one year for now, let's say Erica, because most people would probably have just one year but you need to have at least one year. So one year and then... Let's say it's uh, three. Three? That's the bare minimum. So let's say the bare minimum. So now, based on the answers that we just provided, it is telling you that you are eligible for express entry, which is great. <laughs> so we're going to hit continue. And now we're gonna enter our personal details. So You can just enter my name probably, Max Medic. Let's just say uh, 1995, 1st of January. There we go. Let's say single for this. What do we have here, Erica? So this is actually going to be your express entry profile. So everything that we just did up until this point is just the preliminary steps to make sure that you actually qualify. Now that we know that we qualify, we're able to start preparing our profile. And just as a little background, when I say an express entry profile, once you hit submit, the profile is going to be put in the express entry pool. It's this imaginary pool where all of the profiles that are submitted go into. And then as I'm sure you've previously discussed about the express entry draws, when a draw occurs, depending on your score, if you get selected, you'll receive an invitation to apply. And I can discuss after we complete the profile what the next steps are when that happens. Okay, so for each of these sections, you're basically just going to hit start form and open it up. Our gender and our date of birth is already there. Let's pretend I'm from China. Okay, so that was already inputted before, so that we know is there. And then ID documents. So you can either give a passport travel document or a national identity document. So let's say that we're going to be giving a passport document. So now you have your passport is there and all of the details are here. If you wanted to add an additional document, you can do that as well. But for the purpose of the express entry profile, having your passport here is enough. So here, this is very important. It's asking about your previous applications. So have you applied to IRCC before? You well, would have, because normally yeah. everybody watching us would have a study permit or a postgrad work permit. Right, exactly. Or, or a work permit if you came you know, to Canada directly with a work permit. Mm -hmm. So the next question is going to be whether you've applied for express entry before. And this is an interesting question. And a lot of people have questions about this question. And so the, the main factor here is not whether you have previously submitted an express entry profile, but it's whether you've been invited to apply, then submitted a permanent resident application. So it's the second phase of the express entry application process. So let's say I had a profile in the pool. It was there for a year. I wasn't selected. I would then hit no. You so see, I, would I find it on my postgrad work permit? Yes, you would find it on your postgrad work permit. You would also find it on any letter that you receive from IRCC. So whether it's an approval letter, a biometrics validity letter, you would find it there. And then country of residence, we're going to say Canada. So this is also a little bit of a tricky question. So the question is asking, how many family members does Max Max have? So family members includes yourself. So if you are applying and it's just you and you're single, you don't have a spouse and you don't have any children, you would hit one. And then depending on if you have a spouse or children, that number would change. So let's say we said he was single, so <laughs> one. And then for this question as well, so technically for Canadian experience class, there is no proof of funds requirement. So this question is really just, you know, for you to provide a number that is that you feel comfortable with. Usually we see people putting around 10 000 to 15,000 in here, but there's no hard rule about what amount you have to provide here because you're not going to be asked to actually prove that you have that amount. Be careful because even though Erica says it's not a requirement to show proof of funds, but why would they put it on the application if it wasn't something important? Okay, and then here, so do you have a relative in Canada who is a citizen or a permanent resident? Let's say I do not. Okay, so now contact details. Language of correspondence, English. Next. And then email address, let's put 
max at max. And oh, that was easy. That was very easy. <laughs> so now study and languages. Have you finished high school or any higher education? And again, this high school or any other higher education doesn't have to be inside Canada, right? Right. It can be outside Canada or inside Canada. The only difference is that if your education was obtained outside of Canada, you have to provide an educational credential assessment to show basically what it converts to in Canada. So whether it's considered to be a bachelor's degree in Canada, a diploma, certificate, master's, PhD, and so on. Mm -hmm. Let's so, just say business to make it easy. In terms of complete full academic years, Erica, let's say the person did an eight month certificate. So it, this would depend on a few factors. So the nature of the program itself at times is called a one year program when in reality it's actually only, you know, a certain period of time. It's very similar with bachelor's degree because you have it's four years, but there is every summer you have off, you know, so it's not really actually four years of straight studying. So usually I would say go with what appears on your document. And this will also be a lot easier too if you get an educational credential assessment. University of Ontario, mm -hmm. level of education. Bachelors, bachelor. let's say, yeah. If you're applying from Quebec, I guess it wouldn't be CUC. They have their own portal, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. So it's, that's, yeah. <laughs> Quebec complicates matters that's, a little that's bit. That's if you want to claim experience in Quebec. But if you studied in Quebec, then you moved out to another province, it would be CUC, correct? Exactly. Okay, exactly. perfect. Yeah. Did Max Max study in Canada based on an award that required them to go back to their home country to apply their knowledge and skills? So a lot of people are confused by this question. And my response to them is usually, if you don't know what this question means, then it's likely that it doesn't apply to you, <laughs> which is the simple answer. So what this is, is there's some scholarships that are provided or there's programs where as part of the program, you have to basically promise to return back to your home country to apply everything that you've learned in Canada to the economy of that country. And then did you complete at least 50% of the study or training programs through in-person learning? Save and add. So now it's here. Quick little trick. Unfortunately, the portal sometimes freezes and you get reset and you lose the information that you've inputted. So I always recommend every once in a while, click save and exit. Go back to the main page and then go back into it just so that you make sure all of your information is saved and you don't have to redo anything. Do I need to input my high school or just the highest level of education? So just your highest level of education. What we're focusing on with the express entry profile is gaining points. So what is going to give us our highest score? And so it is your highest level of education, but there's some instances where people come to Canada and they get work experience, but they actually completed their education outside of Canada. So in that case, you would provide your foreign educational information here, and you would provide your educational credential assessment to support that education. My practice in terms of post-secondary education is for the purpose of, you know, completion and just showing everything. I do like to include all post-secondary degrees even though you are earning points for the highest degree, if you have a bachelor, master's, and a PhD, I would say just to be on the safe side, include all three. Okay, and then official languages. So English. Okay. So for the language test taken, there's a little question mark here. So you can hit this question mark and this will show you where you can find that test report number on the report form that you get with your results from the test. So for IELTS, the, report, the test report form number is found on the bottom right corner of the page. It's a pretty long number and it also has some letters in there as well. So you're going to copy that into this section right here. All right, now we're ready to save and go into the next one, which is application details. Yes, and this one is also short. <laughs> so this is where we are mentioning which provinces we would be interested in living in. And so as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is important because this tells the province that you're interested in them. So let's say they have a provincial draw in this province, they will actually automatically consider you without you having to even apply. 
So let's say you're interested in Ontario, and then it's going to ask here, are you comfortable with providing Ontario with access to your information? So I usually recommend saying yes, because this opens up more opportunities for you. Hit next. Exactly. A nomination certificate. Hmm. I wish. So, <laughs> so this goes into the provincial nominee program that I've been talking about. And so very, very brief overview because it is a very complicated process. But essentially what this is, is if you get a nomination from a province, you would get an additional 600 points added to your CRS score. What that means is it essentially guarantees that you're going to be selected in the next draw. So let's say that in this case you didn't. So let's say no. So, so far it's been relatively simple. Now we're going to get to the, the more challenging part. <laughs> so this is where we need to now determine what our NOC code is, our NOC code. So I know that Max has spoken about this in his initial uh, you know, talk, which is gonna be included at the beginning of this video. Let's do the second one, 11202, yeah. So when did you become qualified to practice in this occupation? Typically, depending on your situation, its use is usually correlates with your graduation date. So let's say in your case, I believe you had graduated in 2010. So let's put 2010 and June, which is the date that we put for your graduation. Do you have a certificate of qualification from a Canadian province or territory? Again, this is the type of question where if you don't know what this means, the answer is usually no. <laughs> so this is for specific occupations in Canada, you might have to become qualified from the province in order to work in that occupation. So let's like say- Like a doctor or a lawyer. Exactly. <laughs> I want to make sure everybody catches that part. So just a bachelor's degree, a two-year diploma certificate doesn't mean that it's a certificate of qualification from a province. Uh, it would be beyond that. So if you had to go through some kind of bar exam or um, doctors also have their own qualification procedure, you would say yes to it. And then you would have to insert, I believe, the number of that certificate. So it would ask you for the province, the occupation associated with the certificate, and the date the, the uh, certificate was obtained. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. For okay, many... guys, I just have to emphasize the importance of it. Please listen to it. This is probably the most important part of our tutorial. Erica, go on. Okay. So for many, when you hear the word job offer, you think that that just means a piece of paper with your job details offering you employment at a company. Unfortunately, for the purposes of express entry, it's not that simple. There's very specific qualifications or requirements for a job offer to be considered valid. If you have a post-graduation work permit and it is an open work permit, unfortunately, that's not going to be considered a valid job offer. A valid job offer has to be supported by a labor market impact assessment, or if you are exempt, it would be supported by something called an offer of employment. This is a very brief overview though. There's lots of little details in there. So I would highly recommend looking at the specific requirements provided by IRCC and making sure that you fit into all of the boxes that they provide. This would have to be decided on an individual basis. It would have to be discussed with a lawyer like Erica because it's a very tricky question about this job offer. It's not your classic offer you get when you get hired. It's actually LMIA supported, so it's a little different. That's why we would have to say no, because most people wouldn't have this, I believe. But again, feel free to book a consultation in the description below just to make sure that a person who's had a ton of experience can help you avoid mistakes that you don't want to make and mess up your PR application. Absolutely. And another benefit as well of booking a consultation and speaking with me is that we can look at your options and we can see because having a job offer is going to give you an additional 50 points. But if you already have a very high score and you don't need those additional 50 points, then perhaps we can explore, you know, whether that really is necessary. But if in your individual case, those 50 points are going to absolutely make or break your CRS score and whether you're going to be invited to apply, then absolutely we need to make sure that your job offer qualifies. And if not, I can go over how do we make a change to make sure that it does and you do get those points. Work history. So this is very important as well because this is your work history both inside and outside Canada. So you get points for foreign work experience and you also get points for Canadian work experience. 
But since we're focusing on Canadian experience class, you do have Canadian work experience, and that is actually what qualifies you for applying under this category. Yes, you have work history. And here is where you're going to input all of the details for every single job that you would like to gain points for. So this section might be short if let's say you've had the same job in Canada for your full year, and then let's say outside Canada, you had the same job for six years, you're only gonna have two entries in here. And uh, the experience you gain abroad has to be obviously backed up by legal documents, pay stubs and job offers. So if the employment is not legally proved that you've worked there, don't include it on here. Right, exactly. So, and that's a really important point as well, because for this stage, for the actual express entry profile, you don't need to provide any documents. The documents only come when you receive an invitation to apply and you're submitting your PR application. And again, it's an interesting tick. They have their little box for um, self-employed. This would disqualify you, sadly. So you cannot be self-employed and claim Canadian work experience under CUC. Studying full time while doing this job. So we're going to say no, because at this point, you're likely now on your post graduation work permit. So you are not going to be, your studies have already ended. Here, you're going to fall under if we're talking about post graduation work permit, work permit required, but no LMIA required, because you don't need an LMIA for a PGWP. Hit save and add. You want to do it all over again if you have multiple experiences like Erica mentioned before. So for just the sake of the tutorial, we're doing one experience for marketing advisor. But if you have multiple, it's best if you can include them. Again, if you can back them up with legal documents and pay stubs. This is just very basic research questions to help IRCC gather some information about the pro about the, you know the process and the application process specifically. And this is just for their research purposes again. So this this is not relevant to your application itself. Exactly. And also you really could say no to this and, you know, not answer the questions, but you know, it's, it's, there, it's very few questions and yeah, if you want to be nice, recommend just, you know, be nice. You want to them be Canadian, be nice. Yay. We did it. So Erica, let's talk about what happens next. Yeah. So I'm not going to actually submit it because we don't want to submit a fake profile into the pool, but you would click continue and then it's going to ask you very similar to when you've submitted any previous applications with the portal. It'll ask you to confirm your name. It'll ask you to answer a security question, say that you agree to the terms, and then you're going to hit submit. So your profile's in the pool and you're going to wait until the next express entry draw happens. Depending on your score, you might get selected in the next draw. You might get selected in a draw that happens in a few months from now, or unfortunately a year might go by and you might not be selected at, at all. So let's say you don't get selected. Your express entry profile is only valid for one year. So it'll automatically be removed from the pool after that one year mark. At that point, you can put yourself back in the pool. You can see if perhaps there's some way that you can increase your score, increase your chances. And at that point, potentially looking into provincial nominee programs might be the way to go. Let's say you're in the pool and you are selected. So you are going to get a notification from IRCC letting you know that you were invited to apply. And automatically on the portal, a slot for your PR application, the actual application is going to be created. So it'll be on your homepage of your IRCC portal. And the great news is that automatically all of the information that you provided in your express entry profile is going to be copied and entered into your PR application. The hard part now, as we were mentioning earlier, is gathering those documents and submitting those documents and making sure that all of the details exactly match your documents. If you are interested in applying for PR, I would say you've come such a long way now and to mess something up, something irrelevant, something like a small number like Erica mentioned, would be such a waste that we don't want you to experience. And the reason why I started 
sharing all this valuable information, inviting experts like Erica, talking to ministers of education and immigration is because we want to make you successful. And just like when you go to the gym to lose weight or gain muscle, I'm talking from experience, I get much more if I work out with a personal trainer because that person has been through it themselves and they've gained uh, so much experience education that I get to my result faster and easier. But this is not just something as simple as gaining weight or losing weight. It's your future in Canada. So I highly recommend you consider at least booking a consultation with an immigration lawyer like Erica. It's going to be in the description below to see if you're on the right track and if you want full help, full support, literally, if you want Erica to handhold you throughout the whole process, see how to maximize your chances, minimize your mistakes. There's going to be a link in the description again to start working with us. Erica, thank you so much for your time. It was incredible. My absolute pleasure. I know you don't see me. I don't see you. But for those watching, it's very nice to meet you. And I really hope that I get the opportunity to work with you in the future.